Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Good afternoon, everyone. Jeffrey Combs, President and Founder, Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. Welcome to Tuesday Facebook Live. Just getting dialed in and situated here. We're going to have an exceptional Facebook Live on this Tuesday, September 10th, year of our Lord, 2024. San Pellegrino, here we go. Ah, it's been a very productive day in the Golden Mastermind Seminar Studio so far this morning. So good to be here with you on a breathe, release, and let go day. Every day is a let go day, so it's good to be here with you. I'm going to cover some content from here from the eye of the eye, and the chapter, the quest, is top tier content. Today's topic is the process of change. So once again, it's good to be here with you. I'm going to let the Facebook Live populate. The history of this Facebook Live goes back to 1999. This is originally a five o'clock Eastern conference call that I used to host from the comfort of my home four blocks over there. And that was at 208 West North Street. That was my first property that I owned that I started doing live conference calls. And a conference call is definitely not a live. That was back in the old days when it was really high tech that you could mute the line. So I would have hundreds of people dialing in then I would do a mindset call, obviously no video, people are listening in, and that eventually became the more heart than talent mindset call that would have hundreds of people listening to it at the time. So those of you who are in Josh Waxman's team and culture, Josh originally started listening to that back in 2014, in the spring of 2014, he was dialing in to the more heart than talent mindset call. And I had moved it to Tuesday nights at 1030 Eastern Standard Time. And back in that era, it was not uncommon for me to have anywhere from 200 to 500 people listening in on that live conference call. So Josh just joined me. And as I said, Josh was a listener going back to 2014. And then he used to edify his team and other businesses that he was part of to that live conference call. So Josh just edified back in the day. So what we're going to cover today is the process of change. There's an evolution of change that if you are in this process of it and you're in the flow of it and you're not resisting it, then there's going to be a different level of ease. And so if you're in the flow of change, you won't be in the resistance. But if you're in fight or flight, if you're in force, then it's definitely going to be more challenging for you, and then you will struggle. And if you're a noble struggler and you continue to struggle, then you'll just continue to perpetuate the same set of feelings, create the same outcomes, same circumstances that fulfill the neurochemical craving that keeps you in an overwhelmed, oftentimes overweight state. And weight doesn't always mean physical, the weight of debt, the weight of the world, the weight of what you're carrying, and then your money talk is obviously is uh, is oftentimes a byproduct of resisting change. Most of society res- resists change because they don't understand it, and they think it's going to be very difficult and very hard. Yet the life they're living is challenging for most of the world, as they are noble strugglers tiptoeing quietly through life that will ra- arrive at their grave safely living the greatest pain, the pain of regret. And if you yourself do not want to be that statistic of people that continues to tiptoe quietly through life as a noble struggler, then please be attentive to the content that I'm covering today. First of all, change is a process. And to change, you have to buy into it. And to change, it requires rigorous honesty. So if you're a whiner, a complainer, If you are sensitive, if you are defensive, if your feelings get hurt, if you're a people pleaser, if you're codependent, if you have anger issues, if you over obligate, enable, if you do these situations, 
These are just a few of the areas that you look at and you be honest with yourself and say, that is me. And then you commit to this process one day at a time of changing a behavior. To change a behavior, the, the degree of difficulty is, is to stay in the rigorous honesty portion of it without criticizing yourself while being honest and being able to have clearly defined boundaries with yourself and that you don't overreact to situations so that you can feel rejected, abandoned, you can feel disappointed, frustrated, angry, resentful, and even take out some of your own narcissistic tendencies on other people or gaslight other people for your own low self-esteem and your own tendencies to repeat a behavior. So step one is rigorous honesty when it comes to change. And then what to change. So it's not how do I, it's what do you seek to change. Once again, we're back at rigorous honesty. So in, in this, what do I seek to change? Do you avoid change? Do you avoid picking the telephone up? Do you avoid prospecting? Do you, do you avoid doing business? Are you a chronic avoider? Are you an over-obligator? Do you get overwhelmed easily? Do you Are you a procrastinator? I mean, these are the situations that you look at. Are you unorganized? Are you undisciplined? Do you rebel against making your bed? Do you rebel against paying your bills? Do you wait to the last minute? Is this, is this how you operate? These are the areas that you take a good look at. And then the second situation is you're honest, is you commit. You commit one day. You can't commit to the whole year. You can't commit to the rest of your life. You commit to one day. And that one day is the most important day that you go to bed emotionally sober. I had a woman who sent me a message this morning, I received it at four o'clock my time this morning, and she wrote, still sober. And so that means that she has back to back, I coached her Sunday. So that means she has back to back, Monday and Tuesday, two days of emotional sobriety, which is an amazing accomplishment for her. So if that, if that is you, your commitment is to today, that you be your best self today. You devote your energy to revenue producing activity. You devote your energy to creating results. You don't get caught up in excuses. You don't let your children or your pets distract you. Your focus is a focus on living in the solution, creating results in a relaxed body. Not an uptight body, not overwhelmed, not in anger, not in resentment, not in anxiety, fear and doubt. In a relaxed body, you are producing results that are going to be empowering to you. And then at the end of the day, you also, you also take a look at the other areas that you followed through on. Did you exercise today? Do you have a simple exercise routine that you can duplicate? Or are you so complicated that you avoid it? If you're complicated and avoid it, then what you are is a chronic avoider. But if you can simplify your life down to the common denominator, and to break life down into 15 minutes, one half hour, and one hour increments so that you can follow through in a relaxed body, there's a high probability that you will begin this process of change. Change is a choice, it's an evolution, it's a process, and most importantly, it's a commitment. So if you're going to change your behavior like I did, I was a chronic alcoholic, addict, pathological liar, serial cheater, and then later understood that I was codependent. It, I broke it down to one day at a time. I was able to stay sober back to back for one day, 26 days. And I left a heroin alcohol treatment center. And I watched people come and go in those 26 days. It was a free clinic and it was at a, a county jail on this, or a county hospital. County jail was right beside it. And that's where I found myself at 31 years old weighing 114 pounds at a heroin alcohol clinic. And that was the first time that I was able to commit to address my addictions. And that was 36 plus years ago. So that's the process of change one day at a time. And people say, was it, was it difficult? Well, it's, it's, not, it's not that it was difficult and not that it was easy, it was a commitment. And that commitment was one day at a time to change a behavior. Now, the, the real foundation of change is for you to understand that change requires you to understand just the basics of the brain chemistry, the connection to the gut and the disconnection to your gut, 
and then the why you do what you do. A series of events will shape feelings. If you grow up in an alcoholic, narcissistic home that's unpredictable and people are coming and going, or if you grow up in a home where you are criticized and you're not good enough, you don't measure up to someone else, or you grew up in a home where your role has changed from being a child to a grown-up, there's a high probability that you have, will become codependent because you lost your innocence. And so if you lost your innocence, if you were a babysitter and had to give your money to your parents, this will affect your dialogue with money. If money was just given to you freely and you didn't have to earn it, well, it's a possibility that will affect your ability to create money on your own. It will create money entitlement issues. There's a multitude of situations that I break down for people. I've been a coach for 26 years, one-on-one. -on -one. I am not a certified life coach. I am certified by being a coach, coaching 15,000 clients, 150,000 hours one-on-one, -on -one, 36 years of my own recovery, one day at a time, breaking it down, understanding why I do what I do, and then another 15 years of codependent recovery, having a better understanding of my own enabling, over-obligating, doing more for others than I do for myself, setting my intimate relationships up to fail by over-obligating myself. And the more that you understand why you do what you do, that, that begins to create the breakthrough factor. When you understand why you do what you do, you are stepping out of denial. When you understand the word payoff, what's the payoff for being an under earner? Well, you get a struggle. What's the payoff for being angry all the time? You can feel rejected and you can set other people up to reject you. What's the payoff for being codependent? You can over obligate yourself and not focus on yourself so that you don't feel selfish or guilty. Focus on other people who violate you and abandon you so that once again, you can feel rejected, abandoned, and resentful of the people you over obligate yourself. One of the most important situations you understand is that when you are a chronic avoider, you are creating a payoff to avoid the responsibility of being successful. And by, by avoiding success, then you can qualify you're avoiding failure. But it's really success you're avoiding because underneath it all, you're not sure if you're good enough, you're not sure if you're capable, and you avoid success by telling yourself a series of stories. I'll get around to it, I'll read a book, I'll listen to a podcast after the, after the Labor Day weekend, after Thanksgiving, after Halloween, after Christmas, I'm going to get around to it. That's chronic avoiding. And that's what many people do is they put it off to the last minute and then they rush in with a, and they create a, a whole cardio cocktail of pulling it off at the last minute. This is how many people do their laundry. They do their laundry when they're completely out of clothes. The laundry stays in the washing machine. They forgot it. Then they put it in the dryer and they pick it out piece by piece or they'll put it in the laundry basket without ever folding it or hanging it up and pick out one at a time until they're out of clothes. This is how many people operate the last minute behavior. So change is a choice and change is a commitment. What you're changing, the most important change that you begin to understand is that you are changing the neurological connection that creates fight or flight. Fight or flight is what you grew up in as a child. In the unpredictable household or the unpredictability you grew up in, your body is going to react to the stimulus. So when you become reactive to stimulus, the body, you're, you'll drop a shoulder, raise a shoulder, it'll affect the upper cervical, C1 and C2, upper back, and then oftentimes the lower lumbar. The lumbar is so in your back, in your neck, the cervical, there's seven vertebrae. In your thoracic, there's 12 vertebrae. And then at your belt line is your lumbar, there's seven vertebrae there. So if your lum lower lumbar goes out, the mind-body connection, oftentimes it can be a mother, it can be the opposite sex, it's imbalance in relationships, in intimate relationships, and then that can affect your lumbar three and four, it goes down your leg and affects your calf, and can affect your big toe and your foot, all because you still live in unresolved trauma. A trauma bond and panic patterns is what create fight or flight. Repress feelings, the ones that we forget about, the ones that we store, that we stuff, are the repress feelings. Suppress feelings are the ones that we sabotage ourselves over and over. The main feelings or emotions that creates anxiety, fear, and doubt is anger, hate, resentment. 
frustration, disappointment, rage, and hate. Then there's, then that's the anger family. Then there's rejection, abandonment, overwhelmed feelings, grief, apathy, pride. Those are the emotions that comprise the neurological network of neurons that wire and fire that form our feelings. And as you, the more you understand the emotions that you become addicted to, the emotions that are prevalent for you, you can begin the process of change. What you're virtually learning to change is the interruption point between being the participant and the observer. If you can slow down and observe the situation that's happening rather than just autonomically participating in it, so if you're autonomically feeling violated without the opportunity to interrupt that, then you're going to have that chip on your shoulder. You're going to feel angry. You're going to feel upset. And that, that will bring back the inflammation from the inflamed family environment that you grew up in that affects prostate, bladder, irritable bowel, and a whole host of other issues that lead to your gut issues, which is then H. pylori, parasites, uh, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial organisms, and a host of yeast and gut issues that will affect you over and over to fulfill the feelings of not being good enough because there just comes a point where many people just can't digest it. They just can't understand it. And then if you live solely in your left brain, the analytical egoic mind that processes, thinks, rationalizes, lives in perfection, avoids success, avoids failure, has to have it all figured out, scripted, texted it all out, all of these situations, that's just another avoidance mechanism to avoid being your best self. Because ultimately, in trauma, we hold on to the feelings of unworthiness, not being good enough. If you were beaten with belts, sticks, spoons, all of these situations, the flexing and flinching before the beating, during the beating, after the beating, creates an emotional addiction. It also creates a release factor. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. So an addict always wants a little more. One's too many and a thousand's not enough. This is why we sabotage ourselves so frequently. Then we have to borrow money from our relatives, our parents, our credit cards to pull it off as we continue to nobly struggle, tiptoeing quietly through life in resentment, arriving at our grave safely, pay, pay, paying the greatest pain, the pain of regret. It's so much easier to change than it is to hold on to the familiar. The familiar is what the ego wants to hold on to. The ego is the lower self that does not want to let go of that which is familiar. If you've been a noble struggler for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, that's the trauma bond that's important you look at. If you make 60,000 a year, 80,000 a year, 100,000 a year, and your higher self knows that you can do better than that, but you keep avoiding and procrastinating, waiting for the perfect time, the perfect year, the perfect business, the perfect situation. There is no such entity. Time is now. It's now o'clock. When is the best time to change? Now. Don't wait till you get fired. Don't wait till you get let go. Don't wait till the last minute. That's what most people do. So in adverse situations, it's best to address them now. Not let them compound. Not wait till the last minute. Not until it's crucial. And there's no such thing as I perform my best, my back's against the wall. That is a lie. You perform your best in a relaxed body, in relaxed energy, in higher consciousness, in understanding, knowing, awareness, in trust, truth, in belief, in love, joy, and bliss. That is when you perform your best. You are your best, highest self when you are meditating. You're your best, highest self when you're in peace. You're your best self when you're in bliss. You're your best self when you're in a gamma brainwave state. You're your best self when your brain is releasing dimethyltryptamine. Dimethyltryptamine. That's when you're your highest self. That's bliss. That's when you're in chill mode. You're chilled out. And your body is in this gamma brainwave state, releasing dimethyltryptamine, otherwise known as DMT. And go down the rabbit hole on that and see what group craves that neurochemical. That is a whole nother conversation you would have with me. So being focused in a relaxed body is a key component 
of the process of change. You will not be able to change by being rigid. You have to be flexible. You will not be able to change by being angry. You're going to have to be in peace. You will not be able to change in force. You'll change by being in power. If you try and use force, if you try and force yourself to pick the telephone up, I guarantee you the outcome will not be favorable. This is why it's important that you let go. And in conversations, you learn to flow. You will not write your book in force. You will not be able to do your best presentation in force. Your best presentations will come from releasing and letting go. In any 12-step program, that is called surrender. And in our world, surrender is not weak. Surrender in our world is power. And when you're in your power, you're in your highest self. That is your self-esteem. And esteem requires no outside influence. Power is its own power. It does not consume. Force consumes, consumes time. Force consumes emotions. Force requires a counterforce. It has to be in conflict. And if you're in a conflict consciousness with yourself and others, you're going to create your own payoff. And then you'll create your own rejection. People will leave you. People will abandon you. And then you'll be able to justify being alone. See, this always happens to me. So this is content today on, on the process of change. The most important change that you begin to create is you break the cycle between fight or flight and being overwhelmed. So it's, it's not normal or natural to be overwhelmed. It's conditional. And if you were a child with a lot of duties and you had a lot of tasks you had to do, or you grew up in a household that was highly dysfunctional, or you had narcissistic parents or parents, or you had people coming and going. I mean, you're in so much fight or flight as a child, you can't possibly not be in fight or flight as a grown up. It's not your fault, but it is your facts and it is your choice and it is your opportunity to change the way you've been changing. Because if you continue to keep doing what you're doing, you will keep creating what you've been creating. When you become rigorous honesty with self and you break down why you do what you do, and you are committed to being your best self, and you're able to let go of trying to control the outcome that you can't control, but you still try to control being in control of being out of control. And that's what most people live in, is an out of control state of control called overwhelm. And when you're overwhelmed, you're paralyzed. You're, you're actually shut down. You can't possibly be your best self. This is why people can't sleep at night, because they're overwhelmed. They're so overwhelmed with guilt and shame and worry about the future that haven't happened and regret of the past of what happened to them that that's all that collides together and there's no peace. So the neurons that wire and fire together are clustering. They're bouncing together, forming feelings, and then they magnetize together. But when you take that first breath and say, oh, I'm so done with this. I can't live like this. I will, I don't care what I have to let go of. I don't care if I'm at rock bottom. I don't care if I have no possessions, that the pleasure isn't worth the pain is the breakthrough factor. When you arrive at the breakthrough factor, when you're at the place of no return, when you're at this place where you say, I can't live like this. This is not the life that I've chosen. This is not, I don't choose to be like this. When you reach the state of I can no longer do this, when you're at the place of I am so done with this and that you will, no matter what is put in front of you, you have the courage to encounter it. You have the courage to address the situation for what it is. You access the courage to pay your debt. You access the courage to move out and move on. You have the courage to fire your boss without a safety net. You let go of conventional wisdom at some time. Because if you just keep holding on to facts and making sense and logic and reason and all these situations, you'll just continue to exhaust yourself and years of your life are gone. And all of a sudden, 56 is 66, 66 is 76, 86 is 86, and then you're in regret going, wow, I wish I would have. My name is Jeffrey Combs, president and founder of Golden Mastermind Seminars Incorporated. If you were watching my content today, I am in a compelled mood to reach out to anyone who is in that state of whatever state you're in and the pain is great enough and you have the courage to reach out to me and let go of whatever story you're holding on to 
and you say, I've been following you, watching you, wanting to, whatever the situation is, and you know that your time is your time, and you're ready to step to the plate and be in the batter's box of change, reach out to me and send me a message. Do your best not to talk yourself out of it. If you want to coach with me, and you've been watching me for years, now is now. I am 67 years old. There's some snow on the roof, but there's still a lot of fire in my furnace. If you notice, my hair is turning gray and white, and so be it. But if you want me to be your coach, and you've been holding on for years to say, well, I would like to, I should, I might get around to it someday, some way, somehow, well, now is now. If you want to speak to me, send me a Facebook message. I'll respond to you immediately. I have one free half hour right now if you want to speak to me. Breathe, release, and let go. Good afternoon, everyone.